Okay, how's everybody doing? So I want to show you these ABS uh, signal cabinets that I scratch built out of evergreen plastic. Um, I didn't cover them blow by blow up. Like I'll show you, you know, just under a 10 minute segment of kind of how I went about it and the materials that I used because I just wanted to get them done. And if I have to film every single move, like it'll take me three days. And these things should just take an afternoon to build really. But um, so that's what I did. I just built them this afternoon and into the evening. And um, I really like them. I like the way they turned out. Um, so with River Road, like they don't have CTC or ABS, but they do cross CTC districts and interchanges, et cetera, like with class one railroads like uh, CN and CP, right? And because I want to put signals on my model railroad, because they're cool, uh, somebody rightly mentioned, and I had it in the plans, where's the uh, signal boxes, the ABS boxes, right? So there's these cabinets, right? And then these cases here. I think these are transformer cases. And then there's a pole. There's some poles I made. And I've made lots of those. They're fairly simple to make um, with conduit, you know, um, so I'll, I'll be doing some of that detail too. And then along with the signals, I think that's just a really cool subject to add to a model railroad because it's a significant part of operations, right? And how railroads are run, et cetera. Um, SRY is, is basically line crew, like uh, guys go ahead with radios and stuff and throw switches, et cetera. They, got a, a, you know, they have that part all figured out. But uh, they still have to obey restrictions and signals. So what I'll do is I'll... Um, uh, jump into the part. I'll just show you the materials. I'll review it quick and I'll just show you them almost near finished in a few how I kind of put them together, okay? Okay, how's everybody doing? So I wanted to show you how I make these ABS cabinets, right? Uh, they're simple little models, but they're fun, right? You can take them as far as you want. So here's all the materials that I use, basically. For those of you that have this already, uh, I'm gonna use, there's Plastruck equivalent. I think there's a Evergreen equivalent to this as well. I don't know the number though, but uh, anyone that's using this now would be familiar with it. Um, and then there's Angle 294. That's the Plastrek number 90532. And then there's the strip 20 thou by 100, which I use for the plank, the wooden plank in front of the cabinet, which you'll see 100 thou by 100 thou, number 175, which I use for the concrete blocks. Number 123, 20 by 60, which I use for the lift rings, which I'll show you those. Um, this is number 108, 10 thou by 188 for the cabinet doors. 10 thou. And then this here, 189, is the pieces that I use, which I'll zoom in and I'll show you how I bulk out the cabinet. Okay, so I'll just zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, so these are the little ABS cabinets. They're really quite simple. Oh, there's a photo right there. They're just a rectangular box, um, you know, so I think it's about five feet by four feet by 18 inches deep or something. There's a panel in there basically, a relay box, which is um, this actual sprue that I put in is the actual conduit that'll go into the ground that'll hold this in place. So I'll just go over quickly how I made these, okay? So I just sort of shoot from the hip. I don't use drawings, as most of you know. Like, I, I mean, I do. I do napkin drawings, like sketches. It's just the way I've always done it. I've built from plans. I'll, I'll just say quickly, I've, I know all about blueprints. A lot of I've been there, done that, right? That's not what I do anymore. I have fun with the railroad, and I have quite a lot of experience throughout my tenure as a model maker and I don't need to take it as serious as I used to. So when you do something over and over again, you know, when you get thousands and thousands of hours, you just, it's, it's just the way it is. 
you just look at a photo and go, okay, I want to build that. And if it's close to the size, like subjects like this, then I'm happy with it. You can go OCD whenever you want, like this little stuff here for the hinges, or you don't have to. You know, you can do whatever you want, right? But the point is, is you want to have fun when you're doing it, right? And if having fun is, is getting minutia OCD details, then that's good. I do that too, but then sometimes I go, like one day I'll go, okay, I'm going to do all that. And the next day I go, I don't do any of that stuff. So, you know, um, I just take, um, this is the one, uh, number 189, 125 thou by 250. And I glued these two together, a solvent. I just crushed them really good flat. And then when they were cured or dried, a few hours later, I just board sanded them, the seams off. And then I put it on a jig on my a little bench jig on my sanding block and I just squared up the tops and then they get capped but I'll show you how I put them together I have a few already built so I made four I'll probably need more down the road but if I need more when I do I'll just reverse engineer these or build different ones or whatever but so um, you can see that uh, okay here's one here where uh, I just have a door on and then you can see these little hinge pieces. I guess I'll start with this. You can see that they just get glued on. There's three there. And then this 20 thou rod is, uh, that one went flying, um, gets glued on there with that little square piece just to simulate a, a, a hinge, a square hinge, right? And then you can see where I drilled a hole Well, that's not my drill bit. Where did my drill bit go? I can't find it now. But anyway, I drilled a hole to put the nut in. Uh, these are by Tishi. Okay. I just put a, a nut in there and then one on this side. And then what what happens here is, is you, I'll just go to this one now. i got to switch back and forth. You can see there's a nut on each side, a piece of angle there. That this box just sits on a piece of angle. Okay, and then there's a 100 by 100 thou square stock that I just cut, which is a concrete block. So concrete, metal, and then this is a strip that goes on the front, which will be wood. So for example, uh, what I'll do is, is here's the concrete block. This one, this is always a little bit of a challenge because I can't s square up my head to the model, so I don't know if I'm going to get it on straight while trying to line it up for the camera. But I just put it like this, push down, so there's the two foundation blocks. And then of course this piece, now that that's on, um, I want to make sure I drilled that out good. This is actually the conduit pipe, which acts as a sprue and a little handhold for when you paint it. Okay. Anyway, there's no one set way to do this. You just grab your materials and you just start putting shapes together. And uh, usually something good comes out. I'm actually quite impressed with these. I really like them. I, I, I had no idea... How they would turn out like I didn't really know they would end up like this and I really like them they're thin enough too I can put them between the tracks like you see how my track spacing is fairly prototypical I mean the track spacing in HO or well standard gauge is 13 feet minimum I think and then you know depending on the yard configuration so these will fit between nicely with a signal like right by the pole right So uh, on the back of these, you'll see there's sort of a panel with some rivets. See that? Well, how I make that is I just take some tenth on, I just draft on a grid. And this is my little rivet, it's just a little probe. It actually broke, I had a wooden handle, but I just put it into this pin vise and I just poke holes along the line every two millimeters or whatever increments you want. And then if you flip it over, you can see uh, it's like a riveted, sheet right and then what I do is is I take where's the one is one here I didn't do yet yeah here's one 
this isn't my best one, this sheet one, but I'll show you how I put it on. So I just wet the back of this. And then this will go on like this. It's like sheet metal. All right. I like doing this. I do this quite a bit. I laminate 10 thou over top of evergreen. You can build anything out of evergreen. Like once you get into it and you use your imagination. Because all the standard shapes are there that we use in the real world, right? So that has a backing plate, a sort of riveted backing plate. Okay, and then on the side here, so it's got to have lift rings because the MLW chuck comes along and dr drops these into place. So I'll show you quick how I put these on. So I use a little, little piece of channel right here, and I just glue that in. You can see how it has a little bit of a hole. It just gives it a little extra character. I didn't know why I wanted to put that on there, but it just gives it character. You know, it's just a channel for the um, lift ring, which is right here. So I'll just take that and I'll put a little dab of glue on there. And then pop that lift ring on there. So that's pretty much done, see? And uh, of course this isn't straight because whenever you do it on camera it never goes together straight. But Okay, so that's that for that. And you can see that these little lift rings were made from just, uh, that was 20 thou by 60 thou strip. I just take a long piece of scrap and I drill a little hole along the strip a quarter inch spacing apart and then just cut like here. I just cut close to the hole and just sand, file the top, and then I make a little lift ring. You can make them, like once you do them, a, a few of them, they blow off really fast. So that's how I make the little ABS box. You see one has two hinges, one has three. And then I'll just put these in a clamp and paint them like that, and then install them on the layout. Now quickly in closing, here's a pole I'm going to be adding a piece of conduit to. People have wanted to ask about stripping, so this is 10 thou by... 40 thou. I just wrap it around a drill bit, like a big, a full strip of it. So it kind of puts a memory of a, of a bend in it. Tack it on, and then I'll attach this on here. And I'll just glue one side at a time, and then I'll wrap it around like that. Okay. And I'll do the same over here. I've shown this quite a bit when I've done my building, my scratch builds on my buildings just you can use some ca on that or uh, solvent or whatever sometimes it's nice to do that before you paint it but if you got to do it this way um, there's enough tooth on here you can use ca if this is sanded a bit and it has a bit of tooth for mechanical bond okay I wanted to show you quickly what, like I'm going to zoom in and just show you uh, this staining layered filter te technique, which won't take long. But before I zoom in so you can get a better look at uh, how I achieved this. Okay, there's the f one that I painted there. You can notice the, the uh, danger warning decals on the front and back. Some of these panels have doors on both sides. Did you know that? Yeah, so they can work on it on the rail side or the right-of-way side or whatever. The, the, this like railroads are always pushing safety protocols, so you'll you see s such an evolution of things of the same subject matter in so many different variations. So I'll show you how I I went from basically this to this. Okay, but let me just tell you the paints and the and the brushes and and 
materials quick. So uh, I use Vallejo whenever I use water, like stain painting washes mostly. So I use Tamiya, just to be brief, uh, with my airbrush, right? And I use this Tamiya XF 12J in gray. I really like this gray because it has a warm tone to it. It's got a little bit of green in it, you know, Japanese navy green or gray, sorry. And uh, the reason why I like to put the base coat on with an airbrush is because it, it puts it on super thin, covers beautifully, and it stays crisp. You don't lose any crispness, you know, to, you know, especially when you scratch build, right? The advantage of scratch building is you get the sharp corners on everything, you know, it just, so you don't want to blob paint on to a model like that because you'll kill all that, right? So if you spray the base coat on, or sorry, not this one, the uh, Tamiya, then you don't lose any of that. And then when you stain paint the washes filters, you don't lose any of it either because they're so thin, right? Okay. So that's the base coat is the JN XF 12 gray. And then I have these colors here. So I'll just show you the basic conk or actually here. Uh, I start by putting a wash of aluminum on. This is 71.062. This is model air. And just because it says air on it, I'll mention this again, doesn't mean it's only meant for the airbrush. You can use the traditional brushes as well, and it covers just fine. It's just that it's sort of default airbrush uh, thin, but you still have to thin it more if you're going to use it in the airbrush. And you have to use their thinner. Do not use isopropyl alcohol to thin these paints, but you can do it with Tamiya all day long. When I use a traditional brush and I thin, I use water. But before I use water, I add maybe a quarter teaspoon like to this size of water which is uh, about what is this uh, um, I don't know 800 milliliters or something and then so uh, I put about a half a teaspoon of this into this this is uh, concentrated additive for reducing surface tension of water and for stain painting now you can use dish soap too people have done that but it's not the same but it does a similar thing. I think on larger scale models, it's okay. But when you're doing small stuff, I don't want any soapy or any chances of bubbling or, but I like to use this because I've used it quite a bit and it's excellent. And this lasts a long time if you use it judiciously, right? Like, so, and I really like it. it it's like night or day uh, when you're putting washes of acrylic. If you don't use it, you'll find it pools off and it just, it just doesn't work well for you. So that's why I use it. So, uh, I just get some water going in the trench on this lid from a discarded yogurt cup and then I have my colors and I start with uh, aluminum okay and then this light gray I use a lot of number 71.296 USAAF light gray that's right it doesn't have to say cement or it doesn't have to say galvanized metal like that those are s selling marketing tips like if they say cement gray well, that's just a label, right? It's, a, it's somebody's interpretation of what they think cement looks like. But cement varies all over the place. But it's a good basis for starting out. Or f even I use it because it's for that purpose too, right? And it looks good. And then there's concrete. These are all Vallejo Air colors. Most hobby shops that have them. And then I use a lot of dark sea gray. I don't use black very often. So those are the colors basically that I use. And then of course I have this dark brown. Okay. And then burnt umber. So these are the colors that I basically set up with the water, with the solution when I start to lay on the stains and colors on here in order to go from this based out XF 12 JN gray cabinet to this. Um, that's not the finished one. It's right here. Sorry. To this one. Okay. So let's zoom in and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so I begin by wetting the model. We'll just call it a model because in a sense, that's what it is. Um, everything you build from scratch, basically, is a model of something, right? Um, so I just wet the whole model. Make sure it's all wet, no dry spots. 
Now, I bet you a lot of people are going to say, what, what? He's putting a silver wash or an aluminum wash? So uh, the reason why I want to do this is I'll just show you a couple of photos quick of a basically galvanized and or slash stainless. Like, so they use different types of metal, right? They use tin, they use galvanized metal, they've used stainless steel. It depends on the railroad, it depends on the budget, it depends on a lot of things, right? So I just want a generic look, kind of weathered, gray, galvanized, not really stainless. It's a short line. They wouldn't waste money on stainless cabinets. So, but I find a, a wash of aluminum starts to get you there. And I just make sure it's all wet and I just dab on a bit of aluminum. And what I'm going to do is, is uh, that's plenty on there. And I'm just going to move it around and this will give a hint of kind of metal like it'll metalize it and I find that these colors um, by Vallejo the metal colors oh they're awesome for just water based they're awesome that's why I use them you know um, I can use any color I want really but I love these colors they're especially for small amounts like this for little hobby subjects right with the eyedropper style I really like. So there's a sort of a metalized kind of wash on there. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, you can see where it goes around the rivets and stuff. See? I'm just going to lay this on here for now. And then I'll just show you this one here. So this one is already dry. See how it has a sort of a hint of sort of metalized Okay. So now what I'm going to do with this is, is I'm going to take the dark sea gray right here. I'm going to make sure that it's wet again, right? Wet the whole model. So this is dried. That, sil that aluminum filter in this case, or wash if you want to call it that, has dried, right? So that's the first filter over the JN Tamiya gray that was airbrushed on. I'm just using a good old traditional brush with water with wetting aid solution in it, which helps that paint flow nice. So I'm going to take a dab of dark sea gray, like a pin wash, and I'm just going to lay it on. You can just go like that if you want. You don't even have to be particular or fancy about it. And if you don't like it, if it's too dark, if you think it's too dark, just wet your brush again and just wet it down a bit. You're going to re-highlight the doors and hinges anyway, so you want to get some shadow relief into wherever it wants to go, okay? Especially like it goes around those rivets there. And if there's little bubbles on there, good, let them dry. They'll create little anomalies that'll look really cool. If you don't want them, you can just dab them away with the brush. So you can see the back of that panel there. I'm going to let that dry because that'll tone down quite a bit. So I'll just lay that right here. Now, that brings us to this next one, which is already dry, right? Okay. See how the dark seed gray, it's all dry now. So now what I'm going to do is clean my brush. And I'm going to wet this down. And I've already cut in some light gray, the USAAF light gray for the plank. And uh, I painted uh, the cement color on the little blocks there. And what I'm going to do is take a smaller brush and I'll wet this all down. And I'll take a number O brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the panel now a little bit with some silver. Or some that light gray. I like to use silver for highlights in the same way that I would use light gray. And I'm just going to drop some in, like a sort of dotted in, mix in a little bit of light gray and silver if you want, just to keep it so that the silver doesn't overwhelm. You don't want the silver to overwhelm the cabinet. You see how it's starting to change already? Okay. I'll turn it over and I'll show you what you can do on the back here. So take some silver and just run it down the center like this. 
and then grab some water and just touch the edges of that blob that you put on there just to feather it in. And the whole idea is, is as you start to play around, you actually start to paint. It takes every painter a little bit to get going. All right. And once you do, a lot of this process is going to happen in a unique way to each individual as they learn how to paint and find their own style. There's some really cool sort of effects going on here. I don't know if you can see that where the silver kind of ran down a bit and it looks like it's oxidized or, you know, like it's, it was a galvanized cabinet and it's been oxidized. And then once again, I'll show you a photo where they painted over graffiti so you get this kind of look. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that starts to happen. And then so now let's just look at the front of it, like this board here. You can use uh, burnt umber or dark brown just to, uh, you know, add some graining to it. You know, it's probably a weathered, you know, it's subject to weather. It's probably a, a piece of Douglas fir or some kind of yellow cedar or whatever it is that was used. So it's going to be weathered, but it's still going to be solid. You can put some dark sea gray on it if you want, if you want it to be a little more cooler. And you can drop in a little bit of light gray. But don't worry about it. like, let that dry and then come back to it. And then you can see like on the front of this angle, a little bit of that brown got up in there. You can knock it down a bit. A little bit of corrosion maybe building up from the damp ground below then on the top we're getting really close here on the top is where the sun i like to paint oftentimes thinking of the sun kind of at high noon or 10 o'clock or two o'clock up in that zone of the four hour zone two hours on either side of noon like on the angle of the sun coming down right i just think that in my mind mentally when i paint highlights and you can see that you can highlight that or add a little bit of light gray just flood it on and just leave it and let it dry like that okay this one i want to stand up now let's just look at this in closing and then i'll show you excuse my hand uh i'll show you the pole quick what you can do okay so see how this one is pretty much finished now see the back there that's a little bit of a graffiti decal on there these decals, I just want to show you these. Um, these decals that I use, I love this set. Uh, if you can get this set, grab one. HO scale 87925GE-944CW and et cetera, data, 1993 plus. There's the number, right? For microscale decals, okay? And they're, it's just a whole sheet of like, you know, cautionary danger decals, etc. Electrical, you name it. So they're fantastic. I use them all the time. In fact, I don't even use them for locomotives because I don't build a lot of GE locomotives. But you can sort of see how that, well, I'll just close with the pole, but you can sort of see how that starts to look, eh? Isn't that cool? You know what I mean? Okay. Now, let me just show you the pole. Same thing with the pole. Right, this is JN Gray. All right, wet it down. I'm going to take some burnt umber and then it's going to put a wash on it, just like that. You can put any color brown in, on you want, but just let that dry and then go at it again with another filter until you like it. Okay, or you might want to use uh, some dark sea gray as well. And that's almost good to go, right? Okay. Okay.